Welcome, I'm Carl Tape. Here we'll be looking at a summary of evidence of plate tectonics at the surface. We'll focus on 10 points. There are many more points of evidence supporting plate tectonics. I'll present the takeaway topics first. We're not gonna state these now, but we'll come back to them at the end. The first is that earthquakes occur primarily at plate boundaries. We can see here that if we connect the dots on the map, we more or less get most of the plate boundaries, all types of plate boundaries as shown here. Plates move relative to each other. This map of plate motions is derived from space geodesy, like GPS, the way your smartphone knows your location. And here we can see that plates are moving. We don't even need geological information to see this. You can also see that we have to choose a reference frame as we remember. This one is shown with respect to ITRF 97, but these are pretty close to our hotspot reference frame. If we look at the directions of the Hawaii vector or these ones for the Pacific, they're pretty much aligned with the hotspot tracks. If we remember the Yellowstone hotspot, North America moving to the Southwest at a slower speed. Plates also move relative to hotspots. The key point there is that the hotspot track points in the direction of plate motion from the youngest volcano to the oldest. And here are three shown, Hawaii, Bowie, and Yellowstone. So here was the summary figure from Hawaii, pointing from Kilauea Loihi here, the youngest pointing toward the older island or volcanoes. And this shows the motion of the plate model which is parallel to the island. Bowie hotspot in the Gulf of Alaska, shown here with the proximate direction of the hotspot track and plate motion. And Yellowstone, with the plate motion from this nice figure with the current area of Yellowstone activity, and it points toward older sites where volcanism occurred. So this shows the current direction of plate motion is to the southwest of the North American plate. And it also means that in the future, the activity of Yellowstone is gonna be somewhere toward Montana. Number four, magnetic patterns or stripes on the seafloor are caused by seafloor spreading. This map is showing the magnetic field anomalies offshore of uh, Oregon, Washington, Columbia River here and British Columbia. This is Vancouver Island. This data set from 1968 shown here is something we'll look at in the next uh, talk. But we can see here a highly systematic pattern. If we just look at a box right here, we can see blowing in there that there is some symmetry in the sense that if we look down this red line, you can see red, oranges, light greens, dark greens, and we see this pattern. It's not perfect, but it's systematic enough that it really warrants an explanation for why that is happening. Plates are youngest at the spreading ridges and increase in age away from them. The discovery of the magnetic striping on the seafloor enabled scientists to really map out the age of the entire ocean floor. And plate tectonics evidence gives us that the youngest material on the seafloor is occurring by definition where the seafloor is spreading apart to make new material. So all the red areas uh, are where divergent seafloor spreading is occurring. Number six, something we haven't talked about is about heat. Basically the earth is in a constant state of releasing heat from its interior. And this shows a very scattered map of discrete measurements of heat flow at the surface of the earth. And taken together, when people compile this with other information, you get a much prettier map. And these units are in milliwatts per meter squared. Here's a map of globally modeled heat flow field. And we can already see that it looks quite like the map of 
the age of the plate with the red representing, this is the mid-ocean ridge between South America and Africa. So the reds here are mo mostly centered on seafloor spreading where hot material is coming up. That's where most of the heat is escaping uh, in the earth. Seven, a topic we'll cover two talks from now that deep earthquakes are associated with convergent boundaries. This is a plot showing all the earthquakes in this global catalog that are deeper than 100 kilometers. And you see it's a highly systematic and pretty clean looking view. We can see here's Alaska, here's a line of dots. Here's along Japan, this Marianas. This is Tonga Kermadec, north of New Zealand, South America. This was one of the biggest you know, pieces of evidence that warranted an explanation. Why did earthquakes occur at these depths? Well, it turns out these are the earthquakes within slabs that are subducting. Every single one of these earthquakes is part of a subduction zone of one slab going under the other. If we zoom into Alaska, we can see here Alaska is one of those Benioff zones. And we can see on this map, these dots are colored according to depth. So the darker dots are deeper down in Earth. The red ones are closer to the surface. And so what this shape is showing, as shown in these two cross sections, which we'll explore later, is that this is one plate going down underneath the other. This is the Benioff zone. And we'll explore these more later. Here's our global map of bathymetry and topography. From that, we had the observations of mapping the seafloor that deep sea trenches occur at convergent boundaries. So where plates are converging, you have deep sea trenches. Here's along Aleutian, Alaska. All of these arrows are pointing to some of the deepest parts on the ocean floor. And this is where convergent boundaries occur. We also have a pattern of these subsea mountain ridges, again, just in the bathymetry, that occur at divergent boundaries where seafloor spreads. This is where this buoyant, hotter material leads to these ridges that are higher than the surrounding seafloor. We put these together and we put the plate boundaries. We can see here these subsea mid-ocean ridges are aligned with the um, plate boundaries where they're spreading, and then the trenches are aligned also with plate boundaries that are one plate going under the other at subduction zones. Finally, also in the topography, we have certain mountain ranges that form when two continents meet at convergent boundaries. In these collision zones, here's the most famous one, the India plate is meeting the Eurasia plate here and forming this highest mountain range in the world, the Himalayas. Another one more locally is collision between the Pacific plate and North America plate. This little thing right here is called the Yakutat block, which we'll explore later, but it's basically part of the Pacific plate and it's thick and it's crashing into the North America plate forming the highest coastal mountains in the world. Finally, we got the surface view plate boundaries defined, and plates in motion. And that's kind of the final picture of all this evidence put together. Takeaway topics, earthquakes occur primarily at plate boundaries. Plates move relative to each other. Plates move relative to hotspots. The magnetic patterns or stripes on the seafloor are caused by seafloor spreading. Plates are youngest at spreading ridges and increase in age away from them. Heat escapes at seafloor spreading ridges. Deep earthquakes are associated with convergent boundaries. Deep sea trenches occur at convergent boundaries. Subsea mountain ranges occur at divergent boundaries where seafloor spreads and mountain ranges form when continents meet at convergent boundaries. So these two topics, four and seven, are coming up soon when we dive deep into the earth. <laughs>